Hello everybody. In today's Touch Designer tutorial, we will be learning how to create this beautiful artwork, which is completely colorful. There are so many basic foundational uh, uh, TD nodes that I've used, and it is so easy to create. And this tutorial can be pretty much be wrapped within just five minutes. And you would be surprised how basic components of Touch Designer can literally allow us to produce some of the some of the best and beautiful design and artworks. And uh, one thing that I can definitely tell you is this is a very good um, uh, a very good tutorial for those who are looking for creating an interactive installation. Um, so you can see, like you know, I'm I'm playing around with my uh, gestures and movement uh, in front of my uh, laptop's camera and uh, I'm able to produce this beautiful colorful output. The other thing that I would want to bring out to you is uh, this is my Patreon page. Um, it would be amazing if you guys can follow me. Uh, there are a lot of good tutorials and everything that I actually uh, produce on uh, on weekly basis. Uh, and there is so much more that you would actually get to know. Uh, there is this uh, account that you can try and reach out. So it would be amazing if I can get um, your support. Your support will be appreciated a lot. All right, first thing first, let's get going and clear the canvas. Now, as we know that this is a web camera based tutorial, so we want to have the video device in. So this is the video that uh, we get. Make sure the signal format is marked as um, 30 hertz. So it's, it's going to be flawless and it's going to be very, very easy. Uh, the next thing that you do is you convert the signal into monochrome. So once the signal has been converted into monochrome, you can see the difference here. It's very colorful and it's here it's black and white. The next thing that we want to ensure is we are setting up the resolution because if we look at the output that we were producing, uh, it was more about a square resolution. So here I would just go and use fit and here fit is going to be something that I'm going to go with. And first thing first, I would go and set the resolution as 1024 by 1024. And you would see that there is a, a gap coming out. Um, there's this alpha channel that you see. It's because um, there needs to be an option that needs to be selected. So currently it's selected with fit best, so which is why you see this. Uh, but fit outside is something that we definitely need. So you can imagine how beautiful um, you know, it's, it's turning out to be. All right, so once fit is done, then we go with blur. So blur is gonna be a very simple uh, node that we are going to use. Um, the current filter size is seven, but let's increase it and let's make it as around 22. And pre-shrink is one at this point of time. We can increase it and we can make it as three. So this is something really uh, turning out to be as what I uh, want to go with. And uh, now what I really need to do is I want to use uh, a noise. So let's go and use a noise. Now you would see that there are two inputs noise has. One is the background image, which definitely uh, can be used here. Uh, but here uh, we need the coordinate map. So we are going to disconnect the background image and we would use a blur to connect to our noise. And by doing this, you can easily get to see how the output is turning out. So by looking at it, you can figure it out that it's, it's producing the good result. The only problem that we are observing at this point of time is the lines are very, very uh, of poor resolution. So let's go and um, change the resolution from 256 to 1024. So you can see the output has improved uh, significantly, but there is one more that uh, one more setting that we want to work on, 
which is the pixel format. Currently it is using use input, but we want to set it up as 32-bit float. So by putting 32-bit float, it turns out to be very, very sharp. Now the other thing that you can try and check here is the format. It is, it is currently 8-bit fixed. So we might want to just go at the start and check what is the format that we are getting. So the video signals which are actually coming in from the web camera is 8-bit fixed. So we would just go to this video node um, and uh, so there is no option where we can change the pixel format. But in Mono, we can definitely give a try and change the pixel format from use input to 32-bit float. So that gives us the assurance that, okay, whatever number or whatever signal which is coming in from the video input, we are still converting, we are still converting that into a 32-bit one. So this is pretty good. Now, the other thing that I need to do is I'm going to switch to monochrome. Now, this definitely gives me what I am aiming for, but still, it's not uh, to the point that I'm in. Uh, one of the things that we want to work on is we can work on uh, seeds. So you can play around and you can choose any seed that you like, any number that is convenient and comfortable enough, uh, you guys can pick it up. Um, then there is offset, there's amplitude, then there is exponent. There are a lot of other settings that you can try and work around. Uh, then there is period. So you can increase the period you can decrease the period and depending on what you select, you'll be able to get an output. So as you can see, by just a simple, simple five nodes, you are able to produce an output that we basically need. And you can see like, you know, how things can be, uh, can be made and can be created with uh, such a powerful uh, functionality of Touch Designer. And this is something that we all uh, can definitely give a try and set it up. Uh, the other thing that we definitely have an option and it's worth exploring is using RAMP. So let's use RAMP. And here I am going to change the resolution of RAM to 1024 and we'll make it pixel format as 32 bit RGBA. Uh, currently the RAM has been set up as horizontal. I am going to change it to circular. The period that you see as one, we'll leave it to one as is at this point of time. And then I would be using lookup. So let's go with that option and let's see how good the output is turning out for us. So I'm going to switch on the output from noise and I'm going to switch on the output from the lookup. And we can find out uh, the output from the lookup is much better as compared to uh, what we get it from the noise. And as you can see, this one, this is a much vivid and colorful output that we get uh, by using the lookup. And again, the lookup can also allow you to do a lot of other things. You can change a uh, face. So by changing the face, you'll be able to see more uh, granular detail. And uh, sometimes, you know, it can be a need of the project and which is where you could do that. Uh, the other thing is you can work on a period. So a period can allow you to increase and decrease um, the brightness of it. But I would not be using period for that. Uh, now the other thing that I can do is I can actually use a level to increase the intensity of my colors. So I can increase the contrast and you can see how well the outputs are coming up. So this is definitely very, very basic, very simple and something that just can be created in a short span of time. And you can see how beautiful the output can actually be produced. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. This was a short one, but very impressive one. I would really appreciate if you could uh, comment and like my videos on YouTube and share it with others. 
it really brings a lot of joy and your comment really makes me oh, smile you know it, it actually tells me that oh there are a lot of people around the world who are getting so much of benefit uh, from these tutorials and i feel happy about it so yeah oh uh, well this is 10:40 p.m in sydney at this point of time and i'm very very happy that i was able to produce some good uh, tutorial for you all well i'm going to come back with some more good tutorials and until then goodbye bye for now thank you